loving people is going to have a lot to do with preparing the way for the gospel and softening people's hearts for the gospel, helping them see that Jesus and Christianity is a positive thing. But loving people is also part of discipleship. When we become Christians, we should be learning how to serve. We should have a heart for service. And so these loving ministries are indirectly, but in many ways, very essential to truly making disciples, leading people to Christ and helping people to grow in Christ. And so moving on, becoming more intentional about the way we actually communicate the gospel, I have a point here called finding prepared people. And we all know that God has prepared the hearts of some people. They're just more open, they're more ready to discuss spiritual things and hear the gospel. Other people are just still very closed. And we can't really force people, we can't rush people. And so one of the keys in a church plant is finding those prepared people. Because the people in my small network of relationships just may not be very open. You know, I have my neighbor to the left, my neighbor to the right. I have the banker and the baker. Maybe I have some relationship with them, but I can only relate to so many people. And in a big city, maybe none of those people who I know personally are just very open. And so how do I find those people that are ready? How do I find those people? And so I call this sort of casting the nets wide. Uh, sometimes this will happen by just having large events where you, you advertise, you invite a lot of people and you just see who comes. And, and people who come to the event are probably more open than people who don't. That's one way of finding people. Um, you may have a literature campaign where you distribute literature throughout a city and then see who responds. We did this in Ingolstadt where we basically just put thousands of information in mailboxes and uh, several thousand uh, pieces of literature were distributed. People could send back a postcard and request a Bible or request a visit or, or something like that. Out of the thousands that we distributed, we only got three cards back. But two of those people became Christians. Well, it was a big effort, but two people were better than no people. <laughs> and um, uh, it was quite fascinating the way God used that. Some long stories I can't go into detail on now. But, but God used that to identify people who were open and interested in the gospel. And so uh, now maybe you're working in a restricted country where you're not allowed to distribute literature or you're not allowed to... Uh, have big events that are highly visible in public. A lot of parts of the world just don't allow that for Christians. So how do you cast the nets wide there? Well, one of the things has been through Christian radio. So there's various organizations, Transworld Radio, for example, and so on, that do broadcast in these restricted areas. And they often get letters or correspondence emails that, from people that will reply. They're listening to those radio programs. And so if you can network with some of those kinds of organizations that can give you contacts of people who have shown interest, that's one way to find prepared people in those kinds of contexts. Internet is another way. Um, the internet is being used widely nowadays where uh, people do email correspondence or chats uh, with people around the world who would otherwise be more restricted, uh, that they would be maybe afraid to somehow publicly associate with Christians but secretly through the internet, uh, through radio, correspondence courses, they have contact. So you may need to use some of those types of methods to find prepared people. And then you focus on those people who God seems to have prepared. Um, so uh, another approach is special interest approaches. I've already mentioned some of this, uh, whether it's child rearing or it's parenting or it's some particular need in the community. Um, there have been uh, women's breakfasts where women will invite their non-Christian friends to a breakfast and there's an interesting speaker. Uh, sporting events uh, where, you know, just getting together and having fun with non-Christians, building relationships and then sharing the gospel in an informal way. That's another approach. And then cooperation with other ministries. This is a great way to find prepared people. For example, when we were in Munich, there were a number of student ministries. Uh, the International uh, Fellowship of uh, 
Christian students the, uh, had, a, had ministries in the city of Munich at the universities there. And they had contacts with lots of students. And so we cooperated with those ministries. Some churches see these so-called parachurch ministries as competition. And we tried to not look at them as competition, but said, look, let's work together. They don't plant churches, we do. They do great evangelism with people, students or other special groups that we do not have easy access to. Let's cooperate together. And so we ended up having quite a number of students who were involved in these student ministries who started coming to our church. In fact, at the beginning of each uh, semester, we would pray for the Christian students right there in church and, and affirm them and sort of commission them to, to their ministries in, in, uh, in the campus ministries. There may be a relief effort, a, a, a Christian NGO, a, a Christian development organization that doesn't specifically do church work, but you can cooperate with them. They're doing ministry in the name of Christ. They're maybe leading people to Christ. And you can cooperate and say, let us help you. Let us follow up. Let us uh, be a partner with you so we can mutually um, expand upon each other's ministry. So those are just some other ways to find people God has prepared and then to be able to invest in them. And so, as we say, get moving where God is already moving. And so... Uh, those are just some ways to find those prepared people. And then we'll talk about actually communicating the gospel some different ways. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.